What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I am super excited because I finally got my hands on what I think is the coolest mini PC ever released. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know I love my tiny PCs. I've done reviews on a ton of them, but when it comes down to it, this is my favorite mini PC that's ever been released. And I would go as far to say that this is the ultimate mini PC, at least as of making this video. This is known as the Menace Forum B550 and it's got some really awesome tricks up its sleeve. As you can see, we get a really nice little carrying case here, and they do offer a few different variants. You can get a bare bones model, or you can get it up to the 5700G. So we've got an AM4 desktop CPU in this tiny PC, and here's the PC itself. It's not the smallest mini PC that we've taken a look at on the channel, but then again, we do have a desktop AM4 CPU in here. It'll support 4000 series or 5000 series Ryzen APUs. And when it comes to these mini PCs, a lot of them just rely on internal graphics. And with the 5700G, we've got built-in Radeon 8 graphics up to 2000 megahertz. But when it comes to the B550, this can actually be connected to a desktop GPU using the included dock. And when you're not docked, you've got this nice little carrying case to carry it around with you. They also include a 120 watt power supply because uh, when it comes to that 5700G, it can definitely pull some wattage given that it is a desktop variant. But what makes this little PC so cool is the docking system that's included with it. This is a GPU dock that allows us to install a desktop graphics card, comes with all of our cabling. The only thing you're going to need to add here is obviously a GPU and a power supply. You can use ATX or SFX. I'm going to go with an SFX. As you can see, we've got that PCIe X16 slot where a GPU will be placed. And we've got another slot here where the mini PC goes. So on the side of the mini PC, we've got a little door that can be removed. And we've got a PCIe X16 slot here. So this is going to slot down right in that GPU dock and connect everything up. The dock itself needs to be assembled, but it's really easy. There's basically just two parts to it. We've also got some rubber feet. All of the included hardware is marked in little baggies so you know exactly what goes where. But when it comes down to it, this mini PC can be used exactly like it is with that Ryzen APU. You can use the internal graphics, but when it's time to get some really good gaming out of the way, you can place it in the docking system along with the desktop GPU and up that graphics performance by quite a bit. I mean, it really depends on what GPU you're using. And in this video, we'll definitely test out a high-end GPU. But first things first, let's take a look at the PC itself because you can use the this on the go comes with that nice carrying case and like it sits with the 5700G it's actually a great little desktop PC. When it comes to IO there's not much going on around the front and the sides of the unit everything's really happening around back here we've got full-size display port dual full-size HDMI four USB 3.2 gen 2 ports USB type C we've got audio in audio out and 2.5 gigabit ethernet along with our power button and our power input around back. When it comes to the specs, you can actually pick this up bare bones for 319. You will have to add your own CPU, storage, and RAM, but it also comes with the dock. Or you can opt for the 4700G with up to 32 gigabytes of RAM, or you can opt for their highest end model with the Ryzen 7 5700G. This is based on Zen 3. We've got 8 cores, 16 threads with a boost up to 4.6 gigahertz. This model has 16 gigabytes of dual channel DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz. It uses SODEM RAM and you can go up to 64 gigabytes in this thing. It supports two M.2 SSDs, one 2.5 inch drive, and you could install Windows or Linux. But for this one here, I've got Windows 11 installed. And for the first half of the video, we're going to strictly be using the APU. We're going to run some benchmarks, we're going to test out some games, then we're going to install a GPU in the dock and see how it performs with something a little higher end. Alright, so here it is. I've got Windows 11 installed, got all the drivers updated. As you can see, we've got that 5700G, 16 gigabytes of DDR4. This is running at 3200 megahertz in dual channel. And of course, we got the built-in Radeon graphics. The way it sits right now as a mini PC with no external dock, this is a quick little system. Definitely fast enough to use as your everyday desktop. You want to do some 4K video playback, email checking, you can do some photo editing and light 1080p, maybe a single stream of 4K video editing with this CPU. 
It does come pre-installed with Wi-Fi 6, so as long as your router supports it and you got a fast enough internet connection, everything's going to load up super quickly. The 5700G has more than enough power for everyday tasks. Even when it comes to gaming, it does a pretty good job with older titles. You can go up to 1080p, high settings, something like Skyrim is going to run just fine. But when it comes to the newer AAA titles, there is a little more to be desired. Now, it will run a lot of the stuff at 720p, 30fps, maybe a little over 30 and even some of the newer games do handle 900p low medium settings but the very first thing i wanted to do here was run a couple benchmarks on the pc like it sits right now and the first one we have here is geekbench 5 you can definitely tell those zen 3 cores are working really well we've got a single core score of 1486 multi 8463 not bad with a 120 watt power supply. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks, we have 3D Mark Night Raid. We got a total score of 16,955. Fire Strike, 3,908. And finally, Time Spy with a 1,538. With the built in Radeon Vega 8 graphics, it's not going to win any benchmark awards. But for an APU and integrated graphics, it still does a really good job. Now, once we get our DNA 2 in these APUs, it's totally going to change the game. But for now, I want to show you some gaming on this system like it sits with the built in iGPU. And first up, we have Forza Horizon 5. I've had really good luck on the 5700G with this game, where at 900p, we've got a low medium mix, and we can actually average 66 FPS out of this one. If you want to go up to 1080p, you will have to turn that resolution scale to performance, but it does work. Next on the list, we have God of War, 720p low. We get an average of 43 FPS. Now we could get a little more out of this if we had faster RAM, but this is using SODEM RAM. Faster SODEM RAM is really expensive and there's just no way to overclock it properly from the BIOS. So you're kind of going to be stuck like this. I would probably just lock it at 30, but it's playable. Here we have Elden Ring, 720p, low, we get an average of 48 FPS. Now I know it's showing a little higher here, but once I was done with this run, in my afterburner settings, I did have an average of 48. And finally, we've got Cyberpunk 2077. With the latest patches of this game, I've had really good luck on APUs. Right now we're at 720p with Fidelity FX set to performance we get an average of 65 FPS. If you don't mind playing at 720p, I would just turn VSync on, lock it at 60, and play away on the built-in iGPU. But as we saw, when it comes to the Menace Forum B550, we've got a lot more that we can add to this system. All right, so setting up the GPU dock is actually pretty simple. You will need an external power supply. I'm gonna be using an SFX from Seasonic. And in this early production unit that I have here, the 24 pin connector that was included with it isn't a separated 24 pin. And for my modular power supply here, I need a separated 24 pin. They've assured me that the cabling situation will be sorted out by the time this goes to retail. So I'm just going to be using the cable that came included with my power supply in the first place. It'll work out just fine. The GPU I chose to use for this little setup here is the RTX 3080 Ti. Definitely overkill, but we're going to get some amazing performance out of this little mini PC. If we take a look at the bottom of the B550, we've got two little ports here. One contains a 10-pin connector, the other has a 4-pin connector, which is basically our motherboard connector. And once we have this dock set up, the mini PC is actually going to be powered by our new power supply, either SFX or ATX, so we don't need that 120-watt power supply that came included with the B550. So I'll go ahead and plug in the 10-pin connector that's going to go to the back of the B550. This is going to give us power to the unit itself. And now we need our four pin connected, and that's really going to be coming from our power supply. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and slot this in here. We'll go ahead and plug in our 10 pin connector. We'll also need to plug in our four pin connector down below from the power supply. I just used my included four pin. Well, it's actually an eight pin, but it's separated. So we've got four pin to one of the modular cables from my power supply. We'll go ahead and slot this RTX 3080 right in here. Believe it or not, it does fit this dock. And once it's all said and done, I've got power to the GPU. We've got two eight pins going to that RTX 3080. We've got power to the four pin connector and the 24 pin connector is plugged into the dock. 
I really wish those included white cables did work out with my modular power supply, but unfortunately they don't. But uh, I've got it all set up. Everything's looking good here. We're going to have plenty of power for that RTX 3080 Ti. And there's a couple ways you can go about setting this power supply up. It can be on the left-hand side or the right-hand side, and they are coming up with some kind of mounting system for the power supply itself. Another option, if you have a lower-end GPU, you could go with a Pico power supply to keep everything nice and tidy. But here it is. It's been running great. I've installed the NVIDIA drivers. Go ahead and open up Task Manager. As you can see, we've still got that 5700G. Nothing's changed there. We've also still got the built-in Radeon 8 graphics. But when it comes to getting really good GPU performance, we've got this dedicated GPU attached, the RTX 3080 Ti. So usually when I do these mini PCs with an eGPU, I run something over M.2. I use a little adapter M.2 to PCIe, and it's running at X4 speeds. But with this setup here, we're actually running at PCIe X16 3.0 speeds. Unfortunately, the dock itself is only 3.0, so no matter what GPU you use or CPU, it's only going to run at the 3.0 speeds, but it's much better than X4 running over an M.2 slot. But now it's time to see how this thing performs. First up, I've got some benchmarks. When it comes to 3D Mark Night Raid on the built-in iGPU, we scored a 16,955. Docked with the GPU attached, 53,912. Fire Strike iGPU, 3,908. With the GPU attached, 33,900. And finally, Time Spy. We got a 1,538 with the iGPU and 16,762 with the RTX 3080 Ti. As we saw with the benchmarks, we've got a massive leap in GPU performance, and I expected it. I mean, we connected a 3080 Ti to this unit. So here we have Forza Horizon 5, 4K Extreme, no issues whatsoever running this game, and I got an average of 91 FPS. Moving over to Elden Ring, we were getting close to 60 at 720p low with the built-in Radeon 8 GPU, but here we have it set up at 4K Ultra, running at 60. You will see it fluctuate between 60 and 59. Overall, that's something you'd never notice unless you had a frame counter on. It's running super smooth here and looks absolutely amazing. Moving back over to God of War, here we have it at 4K Ultra, and we're getting an average of 92 FPS. So I've beat this on PS4, absolutely love this game, but playing it at 4K 60 Ultra settings on PC definitely makes it a whole different experience. And finally, back over to Cyberpunk 2077. Here it is at 4K ray tracing medium preset, and I actually wasn't expecting to get over 70 FPS. With all of the updates that CD Projekt Red has put out, I haven't tested it with ray tracing in a while. They've done a really good job with all of these patches. When it comes down to it, the new Menace Forum B550 is my favorite mini PC so far. I've reviewed a lot of them on the channel, but this one definitely takes the cake. I'm a huge fan of adding GPUs to mini PCs, and this really just fits right in line with what I like to do with these things. And I completely understand that it's not for everybody, but I do love the fact that we have kind of a modular system here. On the go, we can carry this thing around with us, use the 5700G and the built-in Radeon 8 GPU, and when we get home and it's really time to game, we can dock the system with a desktop GPU. I will have a few more videos coming up on this thing because I really think it's super interesting. I'm going to do a teardown video, and I'm also going to show you how to add a very small power supply. We're going to go with a Pico power supply. You can get these from 100 watts up to 300 watts. I would go with something in line with a 250 watt. Now, a lot of people aren't going to be connecting a 3080 or a 3090 to this, and you don't need as much power as we saw in this video. So like a 3060 with a 200 to 250 watt Pico power supply would be plenty to power the mini PC itself and the GPU. 
Even a 6600 XT would be excellent paired up with this mini PC. But that's going to wrap it up for my first video on the B550. I will have more coming, so if this is interesting to you, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn notifications on so you know when I post the next one. If there's anything at all you want to see running on this, be it games, emulation, leave a comment down below, and if you're interested in learning more, maybe picking one of these up, I will leave a link for that in the description. But that's it for this one, and like always, thanks for watching.